Hey, what's going on my fellow idiots? Welcome back for another episode of Idiot Proof Cooking. So I was walking down the aisles of my grocery store the other day and I was walking past the canned aisle and I walked past a can of Spam. And I've been thinking to myself for a while now, what can I do with this Spam? I have never tried Spam. I don't know what it tastes like. I know a lot of people hate it, but I know there's a very select few that do like it. And there's got to be something that I can make with it. Now, I do know that some people like to make a spam burger, wherein you can either use just the spam itself as like the hamburger patty, or you can use it as the almost like the bacon substitute for your hamburger. So that's what I'm going to be doing today. I'm going to be making a burger with spam on it, a spam burger, and I'm really excited to see how it turns out. So let's get into it. So I'm making a hamburger for today's episode, so naturally that means I've got to make the bun. Now I'm going to try making a potato bun for this episode, and you can go ahead and cook and mash a couple of potatoes if you want, but if you want a more idiot-proof way of making them, I would suggest using a half cup of instant mashed potato flakes and pouring in one cup of scalded whole milk. Mix both of those together, and there you go. You've got some instant mashed potatoes that were definitely more idiot-proof and way easier to make than cutting up, boiling, and then mashing a couple of of russet potatoes. So once you have the mashed potatoes made, set them aside to cool down and get out your stand mixer. So give me a second here. There we go. And into the bowl of the stand mixer, we're going to add in three and two thirds of a cup of bread flour. Then we're going to add in two tablespoons of white granulated sugar, a teaspoon and a quarter of kosher salt, and then two teaspoons of instant yeast. Once that's in, go scoop in your mashed potatoes that you've let cool down a little bit. And next in is a quarter cup of melted unsalted butter. Last but not least, we're going to add in one cup of lukewarm water. I had mine heated to 110 degrees Fahrenheit. And then we're going to affix the dough hook on our stand mixer and mix this all together for the next seven to 10 minutes until you get a nice, supple, and smoothly combined dough. Now it is going to be a little bit more hydrated than some of the doughs I've made on this channel like it's going to be pretty tacky so we're just going to knead it in some flour for the next one to two minutes make sure to flour down your work surface go get your bowl with all of your dough in there and then just scrape out the dough onto your floured work surface and yeah like i said we're gonna knead this just for you know one to two minutes we're looking to really develop the gluten structure and also just let it work in a little extra flour from the work surface so after we've kneaded it just form it into a ball in your hands then go get yourself a large mixing bowl spray it down with some cooking spray or you know grease it up with some olive oil go get your dough ball drop it into the greased bowl swish it around so the ball gets covered in the cooking oil cover the bowl with some plastic wrap and we're going to stick this in a warm dry spot to let the dough rise for the next hour and a half to two hours until it doubles in size once it's doubled in size for me it took about two hours this time it's time to get this dough out and start working with it so we're going to deflate it with a little punch and then just scoop it out onto your work surface because it's time to start cutting up the dough into buns now I weighed the entire dough ball and it was about 40 ounces so I'm making six dough balls at about six and a half ounces each once you've cut up all of your dough balls it's time to start forming them into buns so just take one of the dough balls and start kneading it and forming it into a ball in your hand alternatively you can also roll them on your work surface to form them into a bun shape but once you do that scoop it up and throw it on a parchment lined baking sheet repeat the process until you get all six dough balls made now we're gonna give these a second round so cover them with some plastic wrap, stick them back in the warm dry spot for another hour to let them puff up like this. Look at these guys. All right, so preheat your oven to 350 degrees Fahrenheit, and then we're going to give these buns a egg white wash first before we bake them, and then optionally cover them in some white sesame seeds. Once you've done that, stick them in the oven at 350 degrees Fahrenheit, and bake these for the next 17 to 22 minutes until they come out nice and puffy and golden and... <laughs> <laughs> All right, excuse me here for a moment. Rose is in the way. So anyways, the buns should come out nice and golden and puffy like that. Look at how beautiful those are. They smell amazing. 
Now we're gonna let these cool down for the next one to two hours and let's move on to the Spam. We got ourselves a can of Spam here. It looks very much like any can of Spam you would buy at the grocery store. So let's crack it open and see what we're dealing with here. I'm gonna give it a smell and I gotta be honest, I'm not 100% convinced on this. Neither is Rose. All right, let's take it out of the can here. Just, oh, look at it, it's not even coming out of the can. I gotta say, I'm kinda, I'm kinda rethinking making something with this like look at that gigantic grotesque block of processed meat oh man all right well we got to go in and taste test it i think i'm going to taste test it here so let's cut off a piece here first so that's the piece i'm going to taste test and then let's cut off another piece this is the piece i'm going to fry up and use for my burger all right so taste test time for this piece i've never tried spam before let's see what it's like all right, live taste test of Spam. Um, never, I've never tried this before, so let's go in for the... I wanna try. Okay, I don't hate it. Wanna try that? It tastes like not quite ham, but not quite anything. This is gonna be interesting on a burger, for sure. Hold on, no, Rose. You want to try it? I'll, I'll Come on, hold on. I want to do it. I can. Good try. What do you think? Does it get the thumbs up? <laughs> She's just been mad. <laughs> yeah. So maybe Rose wasn't as big of a fan of the Spam as her thumbs up would have implied. <laughs> but anyways, let's go on to cooking the Spam and the burgers here. So I've got a large cast iron skillet heating up on a high heat and I've thrown some avocado oil in. So all we're going to do is cook the Spam and two hamburger patties on the cast iron skillet. Now I'm using five ounce ground chuck patties and off to the side here, I have another pan heating up with some melted butter in it because we're going to toast one of these potato buns. You only need to toast them for like two minutes or so. Now back to the patties for a quick second we're just going to hit them with some kosher salt and I'm also going to put some on the spam and then some freshly ground black pepper again a little bit on the spam I don't think the salt and pepper is going to worsen the taste of the spam <laughs> <laughs> All right, we've toasted our hamburger bun, so let's set that aside. And I'm gonna bring in two pineapple rings from a can of pineapples because we're just going to fry these up a little bit. I think that's going to go really nicely with the Spam Burger. All right, let's give our patties a flip after they've started to cook through. Let's just check that. Yeah, this one's ready for a flip as well. And then give the Spam a flip as well because as you can see here, it's starting to fry up nicely. So all we're going to do is then top the patties with two pieces of American cheese each. We want it to be nice and cheesy. And then I'm also just going to bring the pineapple rings over to the cast iron pan so they get a little bit better of a cook compared to the nonstick pan. Just let these fry up until they're cooked and then it's time to start assembling the burger. So we've got our hamburger bun. I'm going to throw just some simple mayo down on the bottom of it, spread it out. It's going to be nice and simple, not a lot of condiments. Mayo is the only condiment I'm going to be using actually. And then I'm going to throw down both cheesy hamburger buns. Look at that. And then I'm going to throw down the two fried pineapple rings and then the piece of Spam that we fried up. Look at this thing. <laughs> All right, let's hope it's good. <laughs> <laughs> Crown the burger with the top part of the bun, and we've got ourselves a Spam and Pineapple Burger. Look at this thing. It is a monstrosity. It's big, and it's juicy, and I'm looking forward to trying it, but I'm going to cut it in half because there's no way that I could just bite into this whole thing. And there we go. Let's look at this. Oh, this looks pretty good. It smells pretty good, too. So I think we got to go in and taste test this right away while it's still piping hot. I am looking forward to trying this. And with the first taste test, I can tell you that this is really good. The Spam is way better when you cook it. Hold on, let me give Rose a taste test. There you go, Rosie. Back to the Spam, it is way better when you cook it. It did not really taste that great. Like it was just kind of so-so uncooked. It brings on a whole new flavor when it's cooked and you sprinkle some salt and pepper on it. The hamburger patties obviously are delicious and cheesy. The pineapple pairs 
really nicely with this all. It's sweet and savory and awesome. The potato bun is really nice. It was super easy to make. It's got a little bit of a different flavor and I quite like it. I'm going to add that into my regular roster of hamburger buns. Overall, this was super, super tasty. And you know what? If you want to try it at home, I highly recommend it. But with that, let's call it an episode. This was a lot of fun to make and I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, drop me a comment, like the video, or even subscribe to the channel. Thanks again for watching Idiot Proof Cooking and we'll see you again soon.